The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And as we join one more time, my friends, as always, it doesn't matter where you're at or where I'm at, as long as we're here at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, we're down 131 points on the S&P cash. And, of course, the thing to start looking at is the volume. Uh, we've been looking for about 18 billion shares necessary to blow out the lows. Uh, we're just over 8 billion shares, which kind of connotes that maybe we get another 15 million share a day. It depends on how bad the end of the day comes in, but we're not hitting quite that 18 billion share high. This reminds me of a day, and I'm going to go back and look for it, uh, but uh, I think I had the biggest single options day, not the biggest day ever, in trading, but I think the biggest single options day trading with the kind of conditions that we have right now. But I want to say it was in 2018, and I think it was in October. So I'm going to go back and look my records, but we have just the kind of conditions. Uh, and all I need is one more thing uh, to act. So does this mean we're at the end of the end of the road in the bear market? No. Uh, but one of the things bear markets has is just ludicrously rip your face off rallies and uh, where they really like to do it on options expiration, which is tomorrow. And it's actually quad witching. So we could have a lot of action. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised uh, if you saw a 2000 point range on the Dow that that wouldn't be beyond the scope of reason. Down a thousand in the morning, up a thousand by the afternoon. It's uh, that's kind of stuff. You got the ECB with new uh, apparently uh, powers, telepathic, not sure, telekinesis, moving objects. Not exactly sure either, but they got some kind of new powers. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that they're more about economic issues, but they, I, the article only said they got new powers. So I'm not exactly sure if they think they're superheroes or what. But, um, you know, the... I, I tell the story quite often, but uh, my introduction uh, to uh, trading and full-time trading uh, was the fall of 1998. And at that point, there was a company blowing up called Long-Term Capital Management. Uh, they had a lot of people that thought that they were just the smartest people in the room. They actually had two Nobel laureates, one of which who... Uh, uh, actually one uh, for the Black Shoals model. Um, they believed kind of like Kathy Woods. Kathy Wood, I guess, or is it Woods? I always, hey, Kathy Wood, I think it is. Uh, is her head made out of the same stuff? Anyway, uh, the, uh, the point I have was that they thought they could just double down, double down, double down. And at one point, they had 99 to 1 uh, leverage in the market on bonds and they had kind of taken a fairly big hit uh, earlier I think about a year earlier or so maybe a little earlier than that uh, when uh, they were all along the peso uh, and there was a thing if you google it called the peso problem uh, and uh, that kind of that took a little wind out of their sails but uh, they thought that they'd just uh, change the algorithm a little bit and they'd be uh, great to go. And so they ended up uh, owning about 80%, uh, 86% of all the bonds uh, in, I think, in Russia. I think it was where it came from. I'm going to have to reread all that stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, even today, it would be uh, like uh, seeing the Dow down 2,000 points. Having somebody like Powell come out and saying he was changing directions, going to throw some money at the market, and the Dow being up 2,000 points by the end of the day. I think it was a Thursday. 
uh, if I remember right. It may not have been. I, 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 I would, it wasn't something anybody was looking for. Everybody was planning on the end of the world going into Friday's close. I kind of vaguely remember that. I'm going to have to go back and look through all that stuff. But uh, man, was there a reversal. Uh, I want to say it was uh, Ruben and Greenspan uh, with echoes of uh, Jesse Livermore's tales from Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. I think it was around 1907 or 1908. Uh, the markets were imploding. And one of the biggest bankers, actually the biggest banker, J.P. Morgan uh, came in with a, a market that was absolutely being torn to shreds and said, uh, now, don't want to get any in a hurry, but there's going to be money for everybody. Just form a line peacefully. Don't get excited. Nothing's going to happen. We're going to make sure that there's money for everybody. And then, of course, uh, Jesse Livermore was kind of a, a blip on the radar uh, in, uh, in 1908. But in uh, 1929, uh, 1930, uh, I think it was at the last, maybe in December of uh, 1929, uh, the markets had already taken just a horrible beating. And uh, J.P. Morgan or somebody from his company came over to Jesse Livermore, who had gone short with $100 million, or no, He'd gone short with maybe it was $10 million. Uh, and it was up to $300 million, which was the single biggest trade uh, adjusted for inflation till the uh, trade of natural gas in 2006. I can't remember that trader's name. But uh, he that was the biggest single trade uh, uh, trade by a single individual. I think that uh, natural gas trade where he went short natural gas at 1675 I think something like that it was fairly close to it uh, the point of my story as I continue to digress is uh, that uh, conditions are right as I said there were a lot of stocks that had two gaps out there we get the third gap today now that doesn't mean we close at the lows or we're not going to close at the lows or anything else is bad going to happen it does tell you though that generally like today where you got a uh, tick, depending on the, the uh, uh, tick you got, was negative 1,700, negative 1,800, negative 1,900 on some systems. Generally within less than five days, but more often less than one day, you're going to get yet another tick. So I am on high alert for seeing yet another big down tick, a rip your face off rally. And then a retest of whatever lows we come up with in the next 24 hours. And everybody's going to freak out. And maybe we get a retest of that low next week on a lighter volume. And maybe we see some kind of low. But generally what you get is just that rip your face off rally. All the people that were way short have been way, uh, have been way short way too long. And uh, the old saying, bears make money and... Uh, uh, bulls make money and pigs get slaughtered. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking that everybody's just a little picky out here. Maybe it's uh, time to uh, give them a little bit of humility. Uh, but uh, conditions are high like a hurricane. We'll uh, talk more about this when we return. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you growing? 
grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Yeah, we'll be back. Someone was asking me what the guy's name was. And uh, every time I put in largest short trade ever, 2006 natural gas, it comes up with the largest T-shirt ever. So I don't know what's wrong with Google today, but I don't remember the guy's name. I just remember that uh, he shorted natural gas almost perfectly at $16.75. And I want to say it was 2006. And he wrote it all the way down to $6 or something. And he'd bought some very extended uh, puts on natural gas for like two years or something. And it just did nothing but go straight down. And everybody was saying it was going to 32 bucks when he shorted it. And that was the biggest single short ever. But I'll have to go back and look at it. Um do I think natural gas will go back to the low of the two days ago? I'm not really got a good handle on where I think natural gas is going to go in the next two days. I would suggest, though, that historically uh, and seasonally, your best bet is to wait until uh, late in, uh, in August. And I know no one wants to hear that right now. But my guess is that's kind of where it's at. Uh, another question out here. Um, long time listener, first time emailer. Uh, where do I think Riot could go? Uh, I think a lot of these things are just going bankrupt. I never thought much about them. Um, on the way up, they've nothing. It's just echoes of Tulipville to me. I don't think there's anything. But if these things are not well funded, they're going to zero in Bitcoin. Um, cyber stuff. I mean, it's been one thing after another that everybody's ignored. But I think the I think what you're going to find out is that governments are just not going to allow it. They're going to find ways like uh, China to excommunicate anybody using it, uh, to get rid of miners, uh, Bitcoin miners, and that kind of stuff. It's just it's not something that a government wants. Doesn't matter what the people want. I think it's what the government wants. You've seen it uh, almost, well, you're going to see it take down 
countries uh, in Ecuador and uh, what else is next to it? I think you're, you're seeing the – I haven't spent a lot of time in it, but it looks to me like those governments are going to fail on the big uh, thing. Uh, Miami's government, the same thing. Miami, uh, everybody thought that was a great thing for them to get into cryptocurrencies. Uh, that's going to turn into uh, the giant Etzel. Um, history is, uh, as one guy in the den said, pilgrims uh, mostly end up face down in the mud with an arrow in their back. And maybe something changes. I have never been a big fan of, uh, of uh, the blockchain. There are some better uh, variants of that. We've talked about why it's never going to replace, or at least my opinion, never going to replace uh, the uh, uh, MasterCard, Visa, that kind of stuff for exchanges. It just could not handle it. Uh, the computational burden was way too high. Uh, Merkle chains, if you want to look that up, is a much better idea. So concept, fairly good. Uh, even for the first few years, uh, the product, fairly good. When you go into wide distribution, though, it's just a it's, – it's like a bridge that's only built uh, to handle a 10,000-pound truck and you're running semis across it with 80,000 pounds. It's just eventually going to break. So we've seen other things like Ethereum, some of these other ones that are better. But uh, no, I don't think that there's a whole lot here. And if it is, maybe I would compare this to Amazon. Let's say that one of these companies is truly Amazon in the uh, Bitcoin uh, thing. Amazon went from 110 bucks to 10 bucks in the dot-com bounce, or boom, boom, bomb. It was Amazon.bomb, I remember, on the cover of, uh, t -t 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 what was it, Barron's. And that kind of was the uh, poster child for the top of Amazon, if I remember right. Uh, same thing for here. If these guys can make it through uh, 40 years of warming through the, uh, 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 going through the desert like Moses, a little biblical reference for those folks out in Lutz. But uh, certainly if you can see that, they're going to be a lot of pain, and maybe someone makes it out the other side. But certainly, as Buff William Buffett, William Warren Buffett says, you can uh, only tell who's swimming without a bathing suit when the tide goes out, and the tide is going out for the cryptos. And I would rather wait instead of trying to make predictions now. Wait and see how many of these companies can make it through. How many have good management in tough times? In the good times. Anybody can make it, as uh, I've heard other people say. In a bull market, everybody's a genius. And in a bear market, you find out actually who has any real chops. So I'm not a big fan of any of this stuff, uh, especially going forward. Getting money is going to be problematic. My guess is the real estate markets, uh, if they haven't announced it, have already frozen up. I'm not sure. I haven't heard from anybody. But my guess is we're probably close to freezing them up because guess what? If they just wait another 30 days, uh, the Fed maybe will add another half a percent. You want to make a loan today when you know if you just put the people off for another 30 days, you get another half a percent? I don't think so. And that probably is going to mean that they're going to do everything to drag their feet to make loans at higher prices in the near future, which is going to kill a lot of uh, real estate stuff in the in that so anyway just some rambling uh what is it uh, uh six degrees of separation kind of that and now for six degrees of market separation with dave white rambling tales of mixed metaphors and tortured analogies that might make a lucid point if given enough time well maybe maybe not you never know but normally i play that in front of it when i'm going to go on a rant Ah, uh, so that's it. Anyway, uh, thanks, Philip, for the question. You never know I'm going to go on those. Just a stream of consciousness kind of thing. Uh, okay, so we've got some other stuff out here, questions. Okay, got that handled. So anyway, um, I'm waiting for the next really huge downtick in the market. Uh, we're going to see whether or not uh, if the market stops at that point, you probably have a good one-day rally coming. 
And again, this is kind of, you know, when we do rally off this uh, next low, doesn't mean it's the permanent low. You're probably going to see one of the biggest rips in all of time. And within a day or so, you're probably going to find out, as most people have found, uh, will find out, that it was uh, a mirage. You come back, you retest the low, and at that point, maybe you got some kind of low. But uh, get ready for some action. Maybe we don't get that. But again, what I'm looking for is another panic sell as we had today. You get that, you're probably good for a one-day rally uh, that is good to rip off uh, the face of uh, the bear, at least for a day. Maybe a little bit of a brush bout back pitch if you're into baseball. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. somebody asking in here the the key is waiting for the signal and not to anticipate it um but i'm not thinking today i'm thinking it's tomorrow and the last time we had the same kind of setup as i said was kind of an october of uh god i'm thinking it was october of 2018 i'm gonna have to go back and look it up tonight but all i remember was uh we had uh eh, what was it out here uh uh, yeah, uh, we had uh, Mr. Z, John from Philadelphia, and I remember we were, I was talking about it all week long because it just kept on, it just kept on getting better and better. 
I don't remember what it was. I think it was a taper, uh, a, uh, a taper tantrum, as they used to call them back then, all four years ago. Uh, but uh, all I remember was coming into that Friday morning. Everybody was predicting the end of the world. I think it went lower the next week. But you got to rip your face off rally that day. And it started at about 1030. And it was the second big tick down of uh, expiration day. And I was buying five and 10 cent options that ended up being two, three bucks by the afternoon. And you don't always get that kind of stuff. But let's say there's just a 50% chance of you making it. Uh, the risk reward is probably pretty high for tomorrow. But the risk reward is uh, zero. Uh, if uh, you don't get that second big tick down. So we'll be waiting for that, or I'm going to be waiting for that. And that's just when everybody decides to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You generally get one, you get two. As I said, the other things in the last couple of days that I was looking for was that third gap down. So we've got that. So, like I said, there was, and I think that was exactly like that Friday coming in to the uh, – to the thing and i can't remember what happened i think the fed said something at like 10 30 the market just all turned around and it was a huge day by the end of the day uh, it was uh, just a i think it would probably be the equivalent of a 2000 point move in the dow today uh from the bottom back up to the top it was just a horrible friday morning and i was buying uh options uh, at 10 cents but uh maybe i don't think john's in the den right now but I know he remembers it because we've been talking about it this week. Uh, anyway, the setup is good, but uh, guess what? This is like a hurricane coming in. You know, you may get a little bit of it, you, and maybe it hits you head on. But uh, you know what? You can almost guarantee if they tell you here in Florida that if you're going to get hit and the prediction is more than three hours away or three days away, you're not going to get hit. And then they're suddenly all brilliant when you're getting hit or, or the storm's two hours away out in the Gulf and it's actually hitting you. So that the real question is when you get that second tick, then the, the uh, counter starts coming in. And as I said, that's just the advancers over to the decliners. So you start getting a negative 16, 1700, 1800 tick on the second one. You normally that's uh, the uh, burnout in the short term. Not the long term, but you get a, a fairly decent rally in the market. And in past days, or past uh, days, in past history in the market, it has been a variety of things, but they've all been some kind of out of the blue news event. Sometimes it's been the Fed, sometimes it's been other things, but uh, you don't know what it is generally going into it. You just know what happens. And it could be anything from uh, Putin dropping dead. Uh, to a change in our uh, policy on energy, which I think is about 80% of inflation today. It uh, could be a great deal of things. Anyway, give me a call today, uh, or you can ask me anything at pathtfnn.com or call me at 877-927-6648. Yeah, it, it, it could be the second one, but generally it's... Uh, uh, in the den, someone's saying we had a negative 1700 on Tuesday. Maybe this is today. Generally, you get uh, if you get a gap down, you want a specific candle to follow that. And for me, you didn't get any kind of uh, candle that said that was also uh, that. Now, maybe we end up one before the end of the day, but the candle doesn't look quite right. And two, um, uh, you know, you normally, I've seen enough headlines out there that are calling for the end of the world. So, like I said, it's probably pretty great. My problem was that options uh, were fairly, still fairly expensive. An hour and a half ago when I was looking at them, I was talking to one of my subscribers and I was looking at, uh, I forget what stock it was now, but he's watched it and it's held up extremely well. And I thought, well, maybe I'll even bite on this one right now because it, it is held up so well and maybe it's the first one I can buy but 
uh, at best, if it goes to where I think it will, which is a nice bounce, it was only two to one. And I need to start on options expiration uh, at about four to one uh, to make money. That means I, if I buy a quarter option today, it's got to end up being a buck tomorrow uh, because uh, I'm only going to be ready or going to be right about half the time. So maybe everybody knows it's going to bounce already, and that's why the options are so high. But generally what will happen in this kind of situation is if they're at 50 cents now and I want to buy them for a quarter, they'll, I'll, I'll do something stupid like buy them, and they'll watch them drop to a quarter, and then it'll actually do it. But uh, just as one of a, a rule of thumb, it uh, doesn't always work, but it certainly hap, uh, hap helps me. And that is when I think I like it, decide to uh, decide to buy it at half that price, where I will actually love it. We've been making that joke in the den all week, which is uh, it used to be on the on the uh, floor, and I can't remember. It used to be on TV, but someone would say, you know, I like Amazon at a hundred bucks, and the other guy would say, well, then you're going to love it at fifty, right? You know, man. So that's it. Anyway, I've got to buy it where I love it, not where I like it. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. I haven't looked at Boeing, but uh, let's take a look at it. We were talking about that in the den. The last seven forty sevens are really get are getting ready to come off the line. Uh, it's actually it is up there, nice, isn't it? I hadn't looked at this one. This was not it. Uh, I'm just not really telling you which one it is to protect the innocent. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that does look good. That is holding up miraculously well. Of course, this thing did bounce off of a huge, well, we're talking about Boeing now, uh, did bounce off that. I think we talked about this the other day. Um, this gap that came in uh, goes back to... Uh, March 18th of 2020, that pandemic low out here. So you did hit it uh, and hit it with fairly light volume. So we've been saying a lot of these stocks have been doing it. The market has a lot of volume, but not everything. Uh, which is, let's take a look at Apple and see what it's doing out here on a shorter term basis. Um, it's not bad today, 65 million shares on Apple. But yeah, I think no matter how you count it, you've got two, you got three or four gaps down on a lot of them. Some of these gaps are small, but a lot of stocks, three gaps down. You have to start uh, scratching your head. Are you getting a little piggy if you're bearish, at least for the next few days? We'll be back. Are in you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So if the market has to drop, it doesn't have to drop. I just have to get a lot big tick. Uh, in order to go up again, do you think it will go higher than yesterday's high? Oh, I think you'll have a, a, a huge run. Like I said, if you're going to get uh, any kind of buying off here that sticks, it's probably going to be fairly huge. And generally, it, it may not last uh, more than into next week. So that's uh, yeah. So anyway. Uh, this is a pattern of uh, what you call, you know, the massive squeezes. Sometimes they last more than a day or two. A lot of times they don't in a bear market. You just have one day up and one, one day right back. Now, sometimes you'll get two or three days, uh, but generally you get the lion's share on the first day. And then you just get margin squeezes for you know, the, as many people uh, that are on the wrong side at the top of a market. Long on margin, there are the same amount of people that are short on margin, and those people get squeezed pretty hard, too. 877-927-6648. And see out here. Okay. Uh, two, two, two. Okay. Let's go back to the thing. Da, 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 da. Uh, okay, we got some emails. Just trying to get all caught up here. Got a lot of stuff going on. Any random thoughts? That's all I've got on the IBB. Uh, yeah. Like I said, the, the one down thing I, I dislike, well, there's two things in the IBB I dislike. Uh, I do like the light volume today, uh, 2.6 million shares compared to 4.7 million shares. Um, you're close to closing back into the trading range. What I dislike is you've got two big gaps lower. I would have liked to have seen a bigger gap lower today. It's one thing. The other thing is just the energy down uh, was a whole lot more. And generally, even if it holds, it's going to go sideways for a few days before it starts going up. Um, you've got two things. If you break the lows with lighter volume, you're probably going to come back into the trading range. If you break the lows with uh, lighter volume and the energy off the previous high was very low, then you ha sometimes have a V low. Generally, more likely, low volume at a low, you're probably going to have some consolidation, uh, and it's more like a U bottom than a V bottom. So, Right now, like I said, uh, options expiration, uh, quad witching tomorrow. Expect the unexpected, uh, but that's it. So I think there are better fish out there than the sea for tomorrow anyway. Uh, I am uh, trading this as most people I think should. My advice would be to trade this like you're in the biggest snowstorm of your life, driving in a car down an interstate uh, with fog. Uh, do not believe that you can see that much uh, f uh, uh, farther forward. 
Um, if you were short from the top and you came down here, God love you. But uh, I'd have the finger on the sell button or the uh, or the cover button. I wouldn't necessarily click it, but I'd have it on it. I wouldn't be. I mean, I think you're. You're. It's kind of like seeing a hundred year old uh, woman and uh, trying to make bets on whether she makes it the next day or week or or two. Right? You know it's coming. Now, when is that going to come? Hard to exactly tell. In the stock market, we have um, some big indicators like the tick. And would this change uh, the trajectory of people uh, that were all uh, bearish? No. It's just that, uh, you know, it's, uh, sometimes these are the sweetest trades of all time just because the incredible level of, uh, of returns if you're right. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, somebody I was saying, I actually thought that this was the good first good sign on gold, uh, for a while. And, uh, uh, the, you know, the volume in there, but this is, uh, you know, with the market down, it actually getting bought a little bit. I think a, some of that has to do with, um, crude. It's crude still up to uh, $2.40, but uh, kind of the first decent signal that this thing has any life in it. Uh, maybe it's just making a small ABC to the downside to get to the 1776. Maybe people actually with crude under 120 now start looking at gold a little bit more. Um, I, I need 1775 or 1776. Doesn't really matter. Uh, kind of in that area in gold to get me excited. Uh, as we said before, in downturns and bear markets, do not be surprised to see the stuff that they should be holding is the stuff that they're selling, and the stuff that they should be selling is the stuff that they should be sell uh, holding is the stuff they should be selling. It, it seems like no one uh, can do the right thing, even uh, folks that are uh, supposed to be market professionals will uh, do the wrong thing. Okay, so let's go back. Oh, I got rid of that chart. Uh, stream is still running. Okay, let's get back up here. I got my charts now after our technical difficulties. Uh, let's go to Dave in Framingham. How you doing, Hi, Dave? Hi, David. How are you? Good. Uh, David, question. On the GLD, looking at the gold, we bought them, it looks like I'm looking at the chart, three days ago. But back in May, we had a low of 168.01, and now we had a 168.30. Is, are we calling this a double bottom? And then we have three tops that this time we should get through the top of 174.94 here? So you're talking Five GLD, right? Say, say that again? You are talking the GLD, right? Correct. Yeah, that we have. Okay. We've had a double bottom here, and then we have. You had a double tops. bottom with 13 million shares uh, at 168 on May 13th. You had a, a low of 13.3 million shares, so you matched the volume. Now you had a low volume bounce. Uh, I would say uh, if you wanted good risk reward, you want one more retest of the 168 low, and you yeah, want we something may not, like. Yeah, we may not get that. We may, you may not. I, I would say that your risk reward is not good until you do. Okay. So, All yeah, right. can it go higher? Yeah, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about whether or not the risk reward is in the trade. There's a lot of trades that I just walked by because, in fact, I, there was one today, and I think that there's a 90% chance this thing's going higher. But at best in options, it was two to one. And I know that even though I think it's 90% that it's probably going there, it's not worth it because uh, any kind of news article could come out between now and then. And it could it took a fairly good trade into a loser. So I know mm -hmm. on options, especially options expiration, I've got to have four to one. On this one, if you're buying an equity or an ETF, until it tests that previous low on lighter volume, there's almost always better fish in the sea. We'll be back in a minute. Okay.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. back yeah we've got uh, dave from framingham on the line i think still there I'm right here hi david okay. hi, hi. david I, so understand you what you're, I understand what you're saying about the bottoms there but we got three tops here and there's a gap at 180 and there's a gap at 180 uh 184 don't you think that if we got through the 174 94 we'd be headed up to fill those two gaps we could be that's but question. it's 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 a game of odds, and the question okay. is, and the and it's no different than getting uh, uh, a two and an eight handed to you when you're playing poker. Right, crap, I understand it's a, that. I understand it's a crap that. hand, right? But I'm just so I'm just wait, yeah. Why, go ahead, I'm why not just wait? Why not just wait or go find something else that you get suited suited uh, or not suited? You get uh, you know some face cards, uh, matching face cards down. There's a lot yeah. of other stuff. Uh, on Wall Street, when they talk to people that are stuck on wanting to trade something, there's a, a, a thing they say, and that is change the name. And if you're a stock trader in a trading room there, and you're destined that you just have to trade something, right? Your boss yeah. will come by and say, change the name. And that means to shut up about it and move on, find something else that has something uh, that you can make some money on. And I think 
we'd all be a little probably a little richer if we had somebody standing over our shoulder saying, "Yeah, kind of the little little uh, what the the little uh, angel on one wing and the devil on the other and out of uh, out of uh, what is that movie from 1978? Animal House, right? Okay. So yeah. you you want you want the angel on your on your shoulder to say, "Yeah, I did the things that I I've seen in the past." that have led uh, to that. Anyway, okay. uh, thanks for the call. Thank you. So when you can, not when you have to, we will see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people.